Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you right now in and through your son, Jesus Christ. We pray over the service. We give you full control right now. We ask the Holy Spirit to come in and take control. We pray over the praise and worship team. We pray over pastor as he brings the word. We pray over each and every person here today. We pray that when we leave here, we will not be the same. Cover the service in the blood of Jesus, I pray. Amen. 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 I'm ready to pray the Lord this morning.
thank you, mighty God, for your Holy Spirit. I thank you, mighty God, for your fresh fire in this place. I thank you, mighty God, for your Holy Ghost and power. I thank you, mighty God, for who you are to me. I thank you, mighty God, for what you have done for me. I thank you, mighty God, for all the glorious works you have done in my life. Oh God, there is so much I have to be thankful for, so much I have to be grateful for, so much to be thankful for, and this morning we say we are thankful for your presence, God, so thankful for your presence, God, so thankful for your presence, God, so thankful for your presence, mighty God.
you are so grateful, can we give God some praise? If you are grateful, you can praise the Lord. A very good morning to you and welcome to the Family Church. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you are feeling blessed. If you are visiting us for the first time today, please make your way to our information center after the service. We would love to connect with you. The men had such an amazing time on Friday at the Family Man Meet and Bride. We believe that their faith and strength has increased in the Lord. If you have a passion to serve in the Kingdom of God, then we encourage you to give your name and details at our Information Center. We will contact you and find a ministry where you can be involved in and make a difference. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 12, the service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Today is the last day for collecting items for our Community Love Project. We would like to thank all those that have graciously contributed towards this initiative. And we pray that God blesses you in every area of your life. And that's all for this week. Stay connected with us on Facebook and Instagram at The Family Church Durban. The Family Church, serving and building the multi-generational family. Amen. I greet you all in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What a joy it is to be found in the house of the Lord. Amen. 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 Okay, so this morning I have the privilege um, to speak on the time of giving, and I'm not going to be too long, but I hope that we will learn something this morning. Okay, um, so for the time of giving this morning, I'm going to speak to you about a characteristic that I love and something that we all strive to possess, okay? And that is confidence, okay? Now, confidence we know is something that some of us struggle with, whilst others really flourish in the space. But nevertheless, it's something that we all work towards. So what does it mean to be confident, okay? It means to have complete faith in something or someone, but what does it mean to be confident in the Lord? To be confident in the Lord means that without a shadow of doubt, without any disbelief, without questioning God, you can completely let go of everything, of every situation, because you know, you know, you know that God will take care of it. So this morning, um, I want to build your confidence a bit more in the Lord. And it's something that you have to decide for and you have to work on. And there's many ways that we can improve our confidence. But this morning, I'm going to share uh, one key way to build our confidence in the Lord. OK, 
okay? And that one way is to believe, okay? So to believe what, okay? It's to believe that everything God says he is, he is. And to believe that God is true on every promise. Now, we know that God is not a man that he should lie. That means that God is truthful, he's always honest, and he will never change. Everything in God's word that says is mine is mine, okay? And everything in God's word that says I can have it, I can have it. That's what confidence in the Lord is. That if God did it before, he will surely do it again for us. My text reading is taken from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 14. Jeremiah 17, 14. Okay? It says, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. I'm going to read that one more time. It says, Jeremiah 17, 14, heal me, O Lord, and I shall be healed. Save me and I shall be saved, for thou art my praise. So it's a done deal, full stop, okay? If God says it, we have to believe it. If God says you are healed, you are healed. If you are saved, you are saved. If you are blessed, you are blessed. That is confidence in the Lord. If the word of God says, uh, and the word of God does say, you will possess the land, so you will. The word of God says you will be fruitful and multiply, so you will be fruitful and multiply. The word of God says you will eat the fat of the land, so you will eat the fat of the land. That is confidence in the Lord, okay? It's very important to be confident in the Lord. So this morning, if you have your tithes and your offerings in your hand, uh, you can bow your heads and close your eyes and we'll just pray. Dear Heavenly Father, most gracious God, we thank you, mighty God, for the teaching of your word. And we thank you, mighty God, for this time that we can have in your presence, God, and to spend time with you. We thank you, mighty God, and we understand, Lord, that if we place our trust in you, if we place our confidence in you, mighty God, we will never be disappointed. You will never fail us. You will never leave us, mighty God. We know, mighty God, that you are always more than enough for us. So this morning, as we place our seed in your hand, we know, mighty God, that you are able to do more than we could ever ask or think for, uh, think of, Lord. So we trust you this morning, God, and we place our confidence in you. Amen.
Let us just raise our hands this morning and just thank God. Whatever's on your heart today, just give God the praise and the worship, whatever you want to tell Him. Tell Him this morning how much He means to you. Just worship Him with everything that you have and say thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. Everybody that's here in one accord today, just raise your hands. Everybody here on the worship team, everybody in the church, just raise your hands. Raise your hands, every one of you, raise your hands, every one of you. I want you to pray a prayer that's on your heart right now. Whatever's on your heart right now, I want you to pray that prayer to the Lord. You must understand that God answers prayer. Never ever forget that and doubt that. Never ever get into a place where you are doubtful of that. But always remember that God answers prayer. For God is not a God who is a dishonest God. He is a God who answers prayer. And if he has given us a promise... He will hold on to that promise. That promise will never ever change. What happens in life is that we change. People around us influence our thoughts and influence things that are in our lives and we change. We change and because of sometimes we have the wrong circles, we find ourselves in positions that we tend to blame God for but not realizing God says, who are you with? Who is speaking into your life? Who are you allowing to speak into your spirit? God is a God who is a jealous God. He will not share his glory with anybody else. And many times as children of God, this is what happens. Because we have some measure of knowledge in God, we tend to think that we know better than somebody else. But even as we've heard the word a few minutes ago, that we need to be confident not on our own strength, but we need to be confident in God. Because it is a very thin line 
to cross over and get into a place of arrogance and where we are confident on what we have and who we are. And there are many people, not in the world, in the church that are arrogantly confident in who they are. And I'm saying to you today, be careful that you don't remain in that place of confidence. It is a wrong position to stand in because God wants us to rely on Him. Many times success comes and success takes us away because we think that we made it and so we are the blue-eyed boys and girls in the eyes of God. In the kingdom, I've got bad news for you. God has got no blue-eyed boys and girls. Every one of you is blue-eyed in God's eyes. Amen? Every one of you is blue-eyed in the eyes of God. Why? It's because God loves us all equally. Nobody is different to God. Because God blesses somebody else with a business or lots of money and a big house and all those natural uh, material things, our immature minds tend to think that God loves them more than us. And I'm saying to you today that does not determine the love of God. It does not determine the love of God. God's love is unconditional. God's love is consistent. God loves you whether you like it or you don't. God still loves you. You can run away from him. You can hide in the cave. But God will seek you out and he will bring you to where he wants you. And many times what happens in the cave, we tend to think that God can't see us. But God is going to pull you out. Can somebody say amen? amen? And so, Father, today I pray that your word will come alive in the hearts and in the minds of everyone that is here today. Change the way we think. Change the way we have understood your word through the years. You have given us revelation through the years. And that revelation has only brought us thus far. God, we want more of you. We are hungry and we are thirsty for more of you. God, we are not thirsty and hungry to feel good. But we are thirsty and hungry to have your word on the inside of us. And yes, we thank you that we are carriers of your Holy Spirit. Wherever we go, whatever we do, we are carriers of your Holy Spirit. And today, Lord, I pray that your word will rest and abide in every one of our lives. Prepare the atmosphere today for what you're about to do in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said amen, amen, and amen. You can take your seats. Hallelujah. I greet you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ, and I'm very excited. I don't know what's happening to the sound today, but um, just bear with us. I'm sure they'll get it right. But I asked the guys to bring this up. This wasn't planned, but I wanted to show this to you, and I'm not too sure if all of you can see it. So, Tishet, maybe let's bring this up onto the platform, and then so people can see this, and we can minister as the Holy Spirit would lead us today. This, okay, there you go. Something's definitely gone off today. No mic. Yes, mic. Two mics. Three mics. Those are the uh, pressures of church. Sometimes these things happen. And you know what happens? God does that to me to test my irritability. And by now, we should be getting sound right, but I don't know what's happening. Maybe God is saying that he wants us out of this place across the way there. So I don't know. You know, God does some strange things when we least expect it, and we have to be ready. This morning, I'm talking to you about the subject on mountain moving faith when we depend on the Holy Spirit. I want to draw your attention today to the book of Zechariah. If you can go with me to the book of Zechariah 
and I'm reading from chapter 4, verse 1. And now the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me as a man. Now, for those of you that do not know, Zechariah is what they regard as a minor prophet. When you do studies on the word, you have major prophets and you have minor prophets. Just like you have major chords and minor chords on the keyboard and on all the instruments, you have major prophets and minor prophets. But mind you, it doesn't have any correlation, if you know what I'm saying. Major prophets in the Bible, I'll give you an example. One example of a major prophet is the prophet Isaiah. He was regarded as a major prophet. A minor prophet is the prophet Zechariah who had a purpose and who God had used and spoken through. And so the Bible says in verse number one, Now the angel who talked with me came back and wakened me as a man who is wakened out of his sleep. And he said to me, what do you see? And so I said, I am looking and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it. And let me stop right there because I want you to know today that as I have said last week and I've said this on a few other occasions, every one of us is accountable to God to grow in Him. If we act the same, pray the same, worship the same, behave the same like we did six months ago, then my dear friends, that is something that we need to really look at and see where are we with God. Portia and I were privileged to be in a meeting this week where they were talking about church at large. And one of the areas that one of the pastors is going to address in a workshop is measurements. How do you measure your church? How is a church measured? Now, if you're a businessman or if you work in a company, you know that you are managed by measurements. Because if you don't measure, you are running blind like the blind leading the blind. Every business has to have measurements in order to grow in their whatever area of business they are. In other words, they will have a target of a hundred thousand rand to meet in this month. And last year, this time, they would have maybe, for whatever reason, the economy or things have changed, the rand dollar has changed, so they've budgeted themselves to do 800, or sorry, 80,000 as opposed to 100,000. But at least they are putting a measurement in place in order to see where they need to be at a certain point in time. Is someone with me today? Every one of us has to measure our personal lives. Nobody is going to measure that for you. You're the only person that's going to measure it. If you want to know what regret is, Go and speak to someone in their latter days, in their senior years, and they will tell you at least two or three or maybe even more examples of things they regret doing. And many people, many, many, many people regret not getting closer to God, not getting serious with God. And yet God is the only source that you and I can rely on in this world. Tamlin spoke about a very important subject called confidence and many people tend to think that confidence is knowing it all and able to be able to articulate and speak. There's a thin line between standing and I know that's not what you were talking about. You're talking about confidence in God because that is correct. But you can be an individual and you can trust on your own strength. You can trust on your own knowledge and all that you've gained. 
and you can come up or do whatever you do, whether it's in business or anywhere else. The day you stop speaking to God, it shows that you're not confident in God anymore. The day you stop speaking to Him. And how do we speak to God? We pray to Him. We cry out to Him. We say, God, we cannot do anything without you. And that is why as you are measuring yourself and you're coming to a place, many of us, what do we see? Many of us are looking. The Bible says in verse number two, and he said, the angel said, what do you see? And so Zechariah responded, I am looking. And many of us are looking, but we cannot see. And let me say this at this stage, that at this time, wherever you are in your life, the Holy Spirit is the only one who will enable you to see things before anybody else can see it. And I'm talking about seeing things in the Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit gives you what we call discernment, and we have the discerning of spirits to be able to see and understand and know and realize. And so that we can act according to what God wants so that we remain in his will. And let's see what the Bible says. So Zechariah says, I am looking and there is a lampstand of solid gold. And with a bowl on top of it and on the stand are seven lamps with seven pipes to the seven lamps. Two olive trees are by it, one at the right of the bowl and the other at its left. And so I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me saying, what are these, my Lord? And then the angel who talked with me answered and said, do you not know what these are? And I said, no, my Lord. And so the angel answered and said to me, this is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. Not by might and nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstone with shouts of grace, grace to it. I'm talking to you today about the subject of faith that moves mountains. Every single one of us here today has a mountain. Who has a mountain in your life? Raise your hand. Some of you don't have mountains. Okay, well, that's good. I've got a mountain. In fact, I've got a few mountains. In fact, I've got table mountains. And the reason why God places mountains in our lives is to remind us that He is God. Because as I mentioned a few weeks ago when I spoke on waiting on God, if God answered every prayer that we prayed when we wanted it, then He is not God. Why? Because then we won't need Him. As much as we do. God has a way of bringing us back. And making us reliant on him. And when you look back and you see. How come some people are flowing in God. To the way that they are. And they look at the entire life as a whole. And they see that in spite of days. Where they are not good. But yet they are still thriving. Do you see. Do you know people like that. In days of where things are not even going well, the overall picture still looks good in their lives. Do you know people like that? That's because there's something called seasons. And I didn't plan to bring this. I brought this to the office today because they had this made. And I wanted this placed in the office because of the various counseling sessions that I find myself doing through the weeks and months. And when you look at this picture, the verse that is written in the light gray is from Ecclesiastes 3.1. For everything, 
there is a season and a time for every purpose under heaven. When you look at this picture, it is the same scene that was taken. The same scene that was taken. So in other words, they haven't changed the scenes, okay? It's the same scene. In other words, the that hills, the tree and all that. It's the same location they've taken the picture. But the picture is taken at different seasons of the year. So in other words, you are seeing it in summer, you are seeing it in spring, you are seeing it in winter, and you are also seeing it in autumn. And this that you see in front of you here is a replica of our lives. Because what happens, and I'm not talking to unbelievers today, I'm talking to you as children of God who know God. This is how we tend to look at life. We only want to see the top two months. What's the top two months? Spring and summer. That's all we are interested in. Why? Because we think that the world, because the world celebrates the lights and all the fanciness and all the bright lights and all the attention on people, we think that we have to always bear fruit as a Christian. And that's not true according to God's word. And that's where we find the weaker Christians, those that are coming into the faith. That is why I've said it many times. Don't lie to people, and I know we're online, so make this clear and let people understand. And tell them that come to Christianity and you'll be rich. That is a lie from hell. Christianity is not about money. Christianity is not about feeling and getting things. It is a byproduct of a faith in a living God. And you can have your time and try and go and say to people, come to church and you will be blessed. And when you tell them the word blessed, please back it up and give them a proper explanation of what blessed means. Blessed does not mean having to have everything together. Blessed means that when you are in the autumn and in the winter of your life, that God is still with you. And this is what really stuck. I asked the leaders this morning and the praise team, what do you think happens in the month of, in the seasons of autumn and winter? In our lives. What do you think happens? What time is that? Who can tell me? You grow. I heard that answer as well this morning. Who else said something here? Give me another answer. Right. Yes, in the natural. Correct. Right? That is true. You got another? Right, Tanesh? Time of discomfort. It is a time of discomfort. Yes, Tanya? It is a, certainly a time of testing of your faith. Because we are coming out of this two years of this dreaded disease of COVID, we have lost some seasoned family members who were matriarchs and patriarchs of many tribes. And remember that the devil wants to break, he wants to kill you, he wants to destroy you. Remember that. Don't forget that. And he's going to use everything in his power to break your faith. And he wants to see your family disintegrate and become of no effect. Okay? And so, as we come to the season of autumn and winter... The Bible says that there's also a time that we have to rest. This time is a time of what you said, growing. What did you say? Growing. You said, what did you say? Testing. Anesh, what did you say? 
discomfort. Autumn leaves, you said, Mama. Who else said something else? Is that it? You're all frightened because you're online. Don't worry about online. They can only see the back of your heads. They don't know who you are. And it's okay to get it wrong sometimes. At least you tried. Remember what the teacher said in school. Try. Not everyone knows the answer. That's why we have teachers to learn. Because we're not all big shots. Some of us act like big shots. <laughs> but here's the story, my dear friend. Listen to this very clear, carefully today. In autumn and in winter, the Bible speaks about the land that has to rest. But because the world made us to believe that we have to always shine, we have to always do well, we have to always excel, we have to always be on top of our game, we have to always be top achievers, we have to always be top earners, we have to always, 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 the world puts unrealistic and undue pressure on us. Because now we've got to shine 24-7, 365 days a year. But the real shining, stand here, Tisha. The real shine is on the inside of a man, not what's on the outside of a man. Because the story I told you about the man who took the, he took the banana and he said to the teacher, teacher, you said it is like the Holy Spirit and we have to be good. It's not what's on the outside, it's what's on the inside. So if you're liking it to the banana, then it's not what's on the outside that matters, it's what's on the inside. Everybody knows that. And everybody hides behind that. I'm giving you a very sound teaching today. I want you to catch this. If you don't catch it, you're going to be sorry because it's, it's learning for every individual. You've heard people, in fact, every one of us have said, and the reason why we said this is because we're hiding behind it. We said it's not what's on the outside that matters, it's what's on the inside. Everybody says that. Why? Who can see what's on the inside? I can't see. I, neither can you see. So it's very easy for us to make that statement as a cop-out and say, it's what's on the inside, so don't judge me. I, God knows my heart. God does know your heart. And that's the good thing. is because God knows your heart. And if your heart is not right, God knows. I don't need to know. Neither do your family and friends need to know. But the man then says, but when you go to buy bananas, you don't buy the bananas that are all brown and wrinkled on the outside. You buy the bananas that look good. Is that good? Is that true? Amen. When you are connected to the Holy Spirit, the internal blessing and the internal connection determines what happens on the outside. Even though your natural mind and your, your natural emotion may not be where you would like it to be in spring and in summer, but your, and, and, and your, outs, your external uh, composure is maybe looking like autumn and winter, but the secret is that in autumn and winter, it is a time of rest. And how we project ourselves in our autumn and winter seasons is very important. Because you can only project what's inside of you. You cannot project what's not inside of you. Only what's inside of you can come out. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit on the inside, I can tell you, you are not going to be able to project what God wants you to. So here is the plumb line of this entire illustration. Your time of autumn and your time of winter is a time called resting. Every farmer knows that he cannot 
plant on his land every single month, year after year, year after year. You go and you drive around the Midlands, you see there are some uh, 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 plots of land that are just lying empty. Why do you think it's lying empty? It's because they are giving the land a time to rest. The land has to rest. But as Christians, we think we have to always be in summer and in spring. So I'm saying to you today as a child of God, when you are in those winter and autumn seasons, you've got to have the peace to know and the confidence to know that it is God still at work and there's a bigger picture at play. Can somebody say amen? Because every one of us wants to prove, we want to show, we want to always elevate ourselves as though we got it all together. It's okay not to have it all together. It's okay to be in a valley some days. It's okay to make mistakes some days. Why? Because we are not God. And when you're in that situation, it is your time of rest. And in that time of rest, you are growing, you are learning. You are getting yourself ready for when God brings this harvest, you can glorify him. Every blessing that God gives us is for a reason. One reason only, to glorify him. Not for anything else. Not blessed to be a blessing. No. If you read the Bible, the Bible is clear that when you are blessed, it is so that you can glorify God. And if you find that when your times of blessing, you are not glorifying him, then quickly God will take you to autumn and winter to teach lessons. Lessons are learned in this. And if we don't catch these lessons well, we won't, this season, this season can be, can run for maybe even 11 months in your life. You understand what I'm saying? It can run for years in your life. It can run for decades in your life. This can run for also decades if we're not careful. Every one of us are accountable to God. Thank you, Tishen. And that is why on this very important time of learning about the Holy Spirit, the Bible clearly tells us that God sent His Son here on earth to accomplish a plan and a purpose. And when He took Him away, He says, don't worry I'm going to leave for you a gift. And like we see in the book of Acts chapter 2 verse 38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The gift of the Holy Spirit. We must be grateful for gifts. Gifts are given to those who are deserving. Your gift must make room for you. And every one of you must get ready for more room. You heard the Bible, you heard the scripture that your gift will make room for you. When you are a carrier of the Holy Spirit, that gift is going to make room for you. When we know how to respond in our lean days, we will know how to respond in our overflowing days. Because there, are, there is there is a way in which we respond when we are overflowing. Because God is watching our hearts on the mountain top. Because everybody wants to be on the mountain, but being on the mountain is not an easy thing for those of you who have been in the faith for a long time. Being on the mountain is more humbling than being in the valley. Because you know it's not you, it's only God. Amen. John 14, 26. But the advocate, who is the advocate? I wrote there, the advocate is our safety net. So we know that the Holy Spirit is, our, is a gift to us, which we are so grateful for. And then the Holy Spirit is our advocate, our safety net. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I said to you, can you imagine what a beautiful blessing God leaves for us? The Holy Spirit that reminds us and is an advocate for us. We don't need to fight 
because God is our vindicator. A person who publicly supports or recommends a particular cause or policy, a person who puts a case on behalf of, of someone else's behalf, that is who an advocate is. The Holy Spirit is your advocate. If you are being wrongfully treated or wrongfully spoken against or things are done against you and you feel that you're in a corner, all you have to do is just rely on the Holy Spirit. Because when your faith is in God, even though you might be seeming to be in your autumn and in your winter, when your faith is in God, sooner or later, God's going to pull you out into your spring and into your summer. It all depends on our faith in God through our seasons. And so as we come to a conclusion today, what to do in order to maintain my dependency on the Holy Spirit? Number one, we must be careful in this that we do not depend on anything other than God. It's so easy to depend on the things of this world. It's so easy to depend on your job, on who you employed by, on the company that you've had, or even on the company that you've established and founded, and it may be running for years, or even an insurance policy, or your parents, or your family, or anything for that matter. It is so easy to rely and let the focus move of God. It, is, it can happen in an instant, and you'll find that many people lose when that happens. We must graduate from an elementary life in God to a more mature walk with Him. How do you know that you are growing in God? How do you know? One of the ways that you know you're growing is that if you react a certain way when somebody irritates you, Six months ago, one year ago. Remember I said measurements? You have to measure yourself. How do you react now when somebody irritates you? You know you have that uncle or auntie, your friend, who always rubs you up the long way. And you know that every family function, you're going to come home, you're going to complain to your family, to your husband and to your wife, you're going to cry. Why, why, why did this happen? And you'll complain the whole night and you'll spoil your whole evening. How do you respond to people? Is one of the ways to show whether you're growing in God or you're going backward. Every one of us must measure our lives. Take a book, take a pen, and write down where your areas of opportunity lie. Another word for areas of opportunity is weakness. They said do a SWOT analysis. In the business world, they teach you what's a SWOT analysis. You heard that word before, SWOT, not S-W-A-T, the policeman. SWOT, S-W-O-T, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. They say, identify what your strengths are. What are you good at as an individual? Write it down. Know what your strengths are. Identify what your weaknesses are. What, what do you make mistakes in quickly? Where, where are you weak? In what areas of your life are you weak? Identify what are the opportunities in your life. And there are many opportunities, even as I look out over this congregation. And there are also threats. When you can identify all of that, you start to write down your areas of development. They call it areas of opportunity. Where can I develop and make things better? And start to write it down because I can tell you we are not going to be here for long. Some of us might be here for 5, 10, 15, 20. Some of us for 50. Some of us for 80 years. But even 80 years is a drop in the ocean compared to a lifetime of eternity. You don't have your whole life ahead of you. You don't have your whole life ahead of you. I told you the story about the old lady who died. And as she died, she held her hand out and died in my hand. And eventually, as she died, the last words was, life is so short. And the thing was, she was 84 years old. And she made that statement. It changed me. Because I thought I had my whole life to change things. And I said, no, I've got to do it now. You only live this life once. You 
If you want to live this life pleasing God and get to your latter days of life where you have what the Bible calls Jehovah Shalom, which is one of the greatest blessings we can have, that even though we are in autumn and in winter, we still have the peace. Even though we are in spring and in summer, we still have the peace. The peace stays with us through all seasons. Never allow the effects of life to overpower the promise of the Father. Many of us are affected by COVID, by the economy, by what's happening around us, by friends and family. But never allow that to overpower what God has promised you. God's given you a promise and God will fulfill that promise. The last point I have there is have a witness. Have an inner witness. If you are unsure about something, if you have to make a big decision, if you have to decide on something that's important in life, the Holy Spirit on the inside of you will be that witness. If you don't have that witness, all you have to do is wait. Nothing wrong in waiting. But the problem is if our confidence is in man or in ourselves, and oftentimes when our confidence is in ourselves, it's because of some level of insecurity. What are we insecure about? Everybody has different levels of insecurity. And you have to deal with that insecurity. Otherwise that insecurity will deal with you. And the only way you can deal with that insecurity is in prayer as you break that in the spirit. And the more you deal with your insecurities, the more you will find the Holy Spirit will work freely in you because there's no more anything to hold you back. Those spirits are now done away with and you're becoming stronger. And then your inner witness will be more and more clear. You're making a decision in life. You will know just like that. You don't have to even ask a multitude of counselors. You make the decision just like that. And it happens because it's the Holy Spirit at work on the inside of you. Zechariah said, it's not by might, and that's talking about your strength, your money, your influence, and your knowledge. It is not by your power. That's your willpower and having confidence and in your ability. It is not by my spirit. But sorry, it, but it is by my spirit that's totally reliant on the Holy Spirit that this mountain will be moved. As everyone stands today, I ask you these questions. What is your mountain that you need to move? What is your mountain that seems to be in your way? What is your mountain that discourages you? Every one of us has a mountain. As your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed today, whatever that mountain is that's in front of you, I want you to know today that the Lord is saying, like the angel said to Zerubbabel there is going to be something that has to change in every one of our lives something has to change in order for us to get to where God wants us to be and oftentimes that which needs to change is our focus on God where we take it off man and we focus on God. It is not by our might or by our power, but it is only by the Spirit of God. And that which needs to change is our focus and our attention on God Himself. Because He is a jealous God. He only wants us to be focused on Him. In everything we do and in everything we plan and uh, say, 
our focus has to be on Him. And as we are coming out of the season of COVID, where many, many, many Christians have grown cold and lukewarm and they've slipped into areas that they know they should not be in. It is only by the aid of the Holy Spirit that we can get back to where God wants us. And I believe today that you are here and God is moving in our midst. You are here today for God has a plan for you. So take your eyes off this world. Take your eyes off the problem. Put your focus on God alone. There's so much of potential that is in this church today. If you can only see what God sees. And many of you are hiding like David ran and ran and ran and ran from King Saul. And King Saul in all his wisdom even messed up because of his jealousy over David. And David ran and ran and hid in a cave but God Pull him out of that cave because God had a divine plan for him. And I'm saying to you today, those of you that are in your caves, don't worry about people that have spoken you down, said things about you, judged you on matters, or thought of you less than them. The good news is that what they say does not matter. What God says matters. Can someone say amen? amen? And I pray today, God, that every child of God, every son and every daughter here today, whatever the mountain is that's standing in their way for them to cross over into their next phase or season with you, whether they are stuck in summer or autumn, or winter, or spring, whatever season they may be in right now, I come against that obstacle in Jesus' name. And I pray, O oh God, that you will give them through the power of the Holy Spirit a greater measure of discerning of the Spirit that's holding them back. And give them the ability to break that in Jesus' name. That they will understand the truth in no weapon formed against them will prosper. That they will not just say that verse, but they will live that verse. And it will become alive in their lives. And every one of them will get stronger, stronger in you. Today, Holy Spirit, we give ourselves to you completely. For only in you can the mountains be moved. Only in you can the mountains be removed. And we pray, O oh God, that every mountain that you are removing today is going to enable us to move into the next season. And in the next season, we are going to see great and mighty things take place. As your heads remain bowed and your eyes closed, let's close in prayer. <coughs> We thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you that we could hear this word and sit under this word today, Father. Father, we just pray that as we uh, further continue and go home to our various homes, give us safe traveling mercies, Lord, and just be with everyone throughout this week. We pray you bless us in Jesus' name. Amen.